Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. It's looking as though as we head through the next two weeks, there will be some changes to the broad scale pattern across Northwest Europe and the North Atlantic. In turn, that is likely to have an impact on the details of the weather that we actually experience here in the UK. But without further ado, I'm going to start as usual by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 20th. At the outset, there is some heavy rain just clearing away from northeastern Britain. A few showers and one or two of those are heavy, following on behind it. Now, as I run the animation, in the short term there is a risk of showers at times, but a good deal of dry and sunny weather. But into Friday and through the weekend, some changes begin to shape up. High pressure is continuing to keep things dry in southern and central regions. And in fact, it could be turning very warm or even hot for a time. I'll look at the temperatures in a moment. But it's to the northwest that we need to look because for outbreaks of rain starting to push in through Sunday, they move across much of the UK. There is some uncertainty about the timing though. Then into the early part of next week, it's a more changeable theme, especially across central and northern regions, as disturbances move in from the west, bringing the possibility of showers or longer spells of rain. But with high pressure to the southwest pushing up towards the UK at times, it should generally be drier in southern counties. But the balance between high pressure to the southwest and areas of low pressure moving in from the Atlantic across the UK is somewhat uncertain and that will impact the amount of rain which we can expect particularly in the southern half of the UK. A quick look at what's driving all this it's really the jet stream profile to start off with it's very disorganized and weak just really to the south of the UK but as I run the animation out to the west it begins to get its act together it strengthens as shown by the blue shading and it's tending to move a little bit further northwards, perhaps between Scotland and Iceland there towards the end of the animation. And that's really driving more of an Atlantic pattern eastwards across the United Kingdom and into northwestern Europe. What does all that mean in terms of the temperatures as we go through the first week? Instead of using the GFS charts, which the animations there were based on, I'm taking these from the higher resolution UK Met Office UKV model. It has been a lot closer to the mark recently from the GFS. Forecast maximums here on Wednesday, the highest values there in central and eastern England, perhaps up to 27 Celsius, cooler as you go north and northwest. Moving forwards to Friday and temperatures are climbing a little bit. In fact, it's become very warm or even hot over much of central and eastern England, 29 being shown here. And then overnight lows, well, on the whole, probably not too bad. Although in the bigger cities, for example, there in the London area, not falling below about 17 Celsius, 18 Celsius on Friday night and into Saturday. So perhaps becoming quite humid again, particularly there in central and southeastern England. In the afternoon of Saturday, maybe, just maybe this could turn out to be the hottest day of the week because there is uncertainty about Sunday, values reaching 30 or 31 in central and eastern England, cooler as you head northwestwards, but even in Scotland, in the north and in the east there, up to 22, 23 Celsius, so warm. It's really through Sunday, as the animation showed, that the details are quite uncertain because we've got that area of rain pushing in from the Atlantic if it doesn't reach southern and central counties, which most computer models are suggesting at the present time, then it's just quite possible that 32 Celsius could be reached in the southeastern corner. But if that rain just comes through a little bit more quickly, it really will peg back temperatures. And um, that sort of thing is illustrated here by the GFS forecast maximums for Tuesday. I've had to go back to the GFS here because the UKV doesn't go as far ahead much lower generally at this point because cloud and rain are affecting parts of the north and the east with some patchy rain there moving across the UK which of course you can't, can't see on the temperature chart but that's a key factor at this time of year in really keeping lower temperatures during the days. The highest values there are only 18, 19, 20, maybe 21 in parts of the southwest and maybe central 
seven counties. So a lot will depend towards the end of the week on just how quickly the Atlantic moves across the UK, the Atlantic weather systems move across the UK, and how much influence that area of high pressure building up from Azores so to our southwest will be having over seven counties. Now, just taking a look at the aggregate rainfall charts for days 0 to 5 from the ECM and GFS models, they both indicate that the wettest conditions are likely to be in the north and the west, but the rain distribution here isn't really very well defined, perhaps with the exception of East Anglia and the southeastern corner where values are lower. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day period, once more, the highest totals in the west and especially the northwest, if you look at the ECM chart on the left, the oranges and reds there over western Scotland and the western Isles show some very, very high totals indeed, up to about 170 or 180 millimetres over the 10 day period, of course, as in, as in total. So these are aggregates, as I said. Once more, though, it's the southeastern corner and East Anglia which have the lowest, the smallest amounts of rain. So that's where the driest conditions are looking likely to be. And it really fits in quite nicely with the transition that I've been mentioning, that is for high pressure to the southwest to be pushing up across the southern part of Britain with an Atlantic flow moving across central perhaps and especially northern regions. So a much more typical setup than we've had for the early part of the summer so far. So in more general terms, do the deterministic models support the idea of high pressure having more influence in the south than in the north as we head towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS forecast chart for Tuesday the 27th. This is the computer model on which the animations were based on. High pressure is building northeastwards out of the Azores. Its impacts generally being felt more strongly in southern and central parts of the UK. A similar story with the Canadian global model, the German ICON, the European ECM, and the UK Met Office. Now, there are, as ever, differences in the details between them, but at this range, it's not worth getting hung up about them. The theme is the wettest weather is likely to be in the northwest, close to those areas of low pressure, the driest in the south. But there could be some patchy rain at times in the south. I don't think amounts are going to be great having said that. Does that general theme continue as we head into and through week two? Well, as ever at this range, it's just about trying to identify the trends and the probabilities using the ensemble data, and I will do that in a moment. But before diving into it, I wanted to bring up this chart. It shows sea surface temperatures across the North Atlantic and around the UK. The key point to take on board is that yellow, orange and red shading shows a positive anomaly. So sea surface temperatures above the long term norm. The reds indicate a huge anomaly, five Celsius or more above that average. And look at all the red close to and around the UK. What that means is that if winds are blowing in from the west, air temperatures at low levels will be higher than they otherwise would be. So it will be having an impact on our weather in that sense. Also, it could affect the development of areas of low pressure and the jet stream profile possibly across the North Atlantic. So there are direct and indirect impacts. And as we go through summer and into the autumn, it will be very interesting to see how this profile develops. But it is truly exceptional at the moment. Well, coming back to the ensemble data, here's the 16 day GEFS plot for London. Air temperatures across the top, forecasts are at about 1500 meters over our head, so way up, but they give an indication of the air mass that's moving over. Most of the individual runs are staying above that thick black line, the 30 year average. Some dip below it for a short time, at least a couple of degrees on some days. But the general theme is mostly above average. And I just also wanted to draw attention to the fact that there are a few runs which are going way above the average. They are in a small minority, and in recent days, their numbers haven't been increasing. 
definitely though something to keep an eye on as we go through the rest of June. In terms of rain, there could be some around, but amounts don't look to be great. There are some spikes which continue to appear through the second week, but again, it probably ties in quite nicely with the Azores high pressure having influence in the south. Looking at two meter temperatures, so back down to ground level, these are the ones we experienced. Mostly above average, I think, sums it up. A small number of runs are in the pink bucket. Those are ones going for over 30 Celsius, but lots of this red and orange, so 21 to 25 and 26 to 30, warm mostly. Up to Manchester, the air temperature profile very similar. Rain risk though is greater than London, there are more spikes showing there. And the two meter temperatures are lower than the ones on the London data table, but probably close to or above the average for this part of the UK. Up to Glasgow, it's a similar story. The air temperature profile, similar, but the rain risk has increased once more, so it's greater than on the Manchester chart, which in turn was greater than on the London one. And temperatures at the ground level are lower than Manchester, which was lower than London, but relative to the norms for this part of the UK, not too bad, I suspect. Quite, maybe a little bit above it even here. There is a big spread of solutions in the GEFS ensemble, and these charts highlight it. I mentioned that a few of the runs, a small minority, are going for extremely high temperatures at the 850 HPA level, so 1500 meters above our heads. And the chart on the right there shows correspondingly high temperatures down at the surface, values reaching 35 Celsius on the 4th of July in London and the southeast. But that is only one out of over 30 solutions in the GEFS. If we jump to the chart on the left, it's now showing forecast maximums of around 12 to 15 Celsius over much of the country. Only about 20 degrees or so lower than the one on the right. In the middle is the ensemble mean, which is generated by averaging out all of the individual forecasts and values here are now 22, 23, 24 Celsius in southern and central Britain. I suspect that's one which will be close to the mark. The ensemble mean isn't always the best guide, but on this occasion it's probably not too bad. If anything, it may well be that temperatures are a little bit higher than it suggests, but that extreme heat, which has just been hinted at by one or two models, model runs in the ensemble, currently does not look like a scenario which will develop in late June or early July, but it's not out of the question. Watch for model updates as the time approaches. The 10-day ECM mean surface level pressure plot, so for Friday the 30th of June, indicates high pressure to the southwest and Atlantic flow moving in across the UK, and that's fitting in with what I've been discussing. High pressure generally having more of a say in the south than in the north, more showers or longer spells of rain moving across the northern half of the UK, but it certainly looks more changeable than we've had recently. And the uh, mean surface level pressure data table for, for York using data from the GEFS reinforces that message. Yellow's dominant early on, but the amount of green in these columns increases. So those are runs which are going for a maximum of uh, 1,010 millibars or lower. So 996 is at the uh, bottom end of that range. Lower pressure than has often been the case. And the signal is for, it, for pressure to be declining through the second week. So more changeable in general terms but probably not too bad in the south. So to summarize, week one, sunny spells and showers early on, then into the weekend, the risk of rain increases in the northwest, but in southern and central regions, it should be fine and very warm or even hot. But by Sunday and into Monday, cooler air begins to push southeastwards, that brings some rain, there is uncertainty about the timing, so even if you're in the south and you're planning a barbecue on Sunday afternoon, keep up to date with the short-range forecasts. Week two, it's quite mixed on the whole. 
wettest in the north, driest in the south. Rain amounts in the south, probably not great, but there will be some around, I expect. Temperatures staying above the average, especially in the south, and when the sun shines, there is that ongoing potential for it to be warm or even very warm. Just that low chance at the present time of it turning very hot. But one or two runs are pointing in that direction, so don't entirely discount that scenario just yet. So, there we have it. A more changeable, and I would suggest, typical weather pattern becoming established as we head through the next two weeks. The influence of the Azores high pressure yo-yoing, but generally keeping things drier in the south. Also, with that very warm North Atlantic, temperatures are likely to be remaining above the average. But the devil, of course, will be in the details. And if you want to stay up to date, then check the Weather Outlook website, which I run. It provides updates on a daily basis, as well as automated forecasts, which are fully refreshed for your locality every six hours. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, then please hit the like button below. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching now. Bye.